today's class For today's class, have a block or two, and we'll just get started in seated. Get yourself cozy, take a comfortable seat. Take a sip of your tea. <laughs> <clears throat> Allow your spine to be tall and ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Really, we're aligning the roof of our mouth with the respiratory diaphragm and the pelvic floor. But if that feels a little bit abstract, think about your sitting bones, what you're sitting on, whether you can feel the right and the left side evenly. You can put your hands on your lowest ribs and just observe if you're actually shifted in front of your pelvis, a little bit behind your pelvis, right on top of the pelvis, which is the Goldilocks medium that we're looking for. And then same thing with our heads. We tend to shift so far forward with our heads all the time. What would it be to pull your ears back, drop your chin, and can you do that without your ribs also popping forward? So finding that beautiful alignment. Roll your shoulders a couple of times and we'll just start with a bit of a seated meditation for centering. Eyes closed, invite the tongue to float to the roof of the mouth. Can we allow for a little bit of spaciousness around our thoughts? Inviting breath to be full. Inviting breath to be three-dimensional, not just in the front body, but also in the side, in the back, the top, and the bottom. And then place one hand on your abdomen, one hand on your chest, lips together. Invite breath to travel in and out through the nose. Lips together, teeth apart, staying centered. Can you feel movement under your hands? If you feel a lot of movement in one place, then shift that hand to the side of the rib. Can you feel movement in the sides of the ribs, not just the right, but also the left? Let's collectively take in a full breath. And let out a big sigh. Imagine that with that sigh, we're letting go of anything that's no longer serving us in this moment. And then crack open your eyes, get present again, orient yourself to your surroundings. We'll set one of our feet flat to the floor in front. And we're gonna play in this yoga practice today with feet and ankles and one of the most common patterns that is visible in, let's say, modern humans, well, just the people who I have seen as clients, is essentially a fallen arch. And by fallen arch, I don't mean like a um, necessarily that you were born with flat feet, but often that like functionally that we kind of roll to the inside of our feet quite a bit. And that contributes to bunions, it contributes to knee pain, hip pain, all sorts of things. 
So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your opposite hand to the foot that's in front, and you're gonna use the hand to tack down the base of the big toe. We'll incorporate this later into some standing poses. And you're gonna allow your knee to drift off to the side. See this? So I've got my right knee bent, my right foot flat to the floor, my left hand, on the base of that big toe, holding the big toe down, but specifically holding the base of the big toe down, the front of the arch of the foot, the medial arch. And as the knee goes to the side, I'm getting this exaggerated arch. Now I can almost feel the muscles in my calf starting to pull up the arch and assist me with that as I lighten up on my hand and let the knee keep going on its own. Let me just describe what you should do if you're feeling like your hip doesn't want to get into this position. Obviously, well, not obvious necessarily, but wiggling your foot out a little bit further can help. If you can't reach your foot, then use the corner of the block to help hold the big toe down or even sit on a block and do that. So you've got plenty of space. So the angle here for the hip is not quite so intense. So lots of options with that. So holding the base of the big toe down, let the knee drift out, a little bit of a butterfly effect. And then hold it out, feel the arch stay supported and lifted. I'm like literally about to get a cramp in my arch because I don't do this often enough clearly. Try to keep the base of the big toe down and then try to lift all five toes up off the floor. Can you spread them out and lower them down one at a time? Lift and spread and lower. Lift and spread and lower. This may blow your mind a little bit, but the natural shape of our feet, the ideal shape of a foot, is an inverted triangle with the toes are the widest part and not the place where the toes meet the rest of the foot, not the ball mound of the foot. Lift, spread, lower. Make that triangle shape with your foot, feel all the crazy muscles in your shin that you can feel, and then we shall switch sides. So other foot goes in front. Remember, you can sit up on something to reduce the angle of the hip. You can wiggle your foot out in front of you. You can also, instead of using your hand, use the corner of the block. But the idea is that this is being held down and that the arch is lifting. So we're gonna take this very um, kind of physical therapy realm exercise. I'm doing it without my hands right now, but I, if you need to continue to use your hands, you wanna to start to open that knee a little bit more and a little more to the side. And we're gonna to start to apply it in all of our standing shapes so that we can really build that resilience in the muscles of the arch of the foot. Keep it lifted. See if you can keep the base of your big toe down as you lift all five toes. Spread them wide. Notice my, hand, my hands want to spread wide too. And lower down. Lift. Arches. High as it's ever been on your body. Spread and lower. Lift. Spread and lower. I have a little bit of a tickle in my throat today, so never mind me. I'm going to be taking sips of water throughout class. And then last one, lift, spread, lower. We'll place both feet out in front and really squish the base of the big toes down to the ground. Feel the arches lift up. So you're gonna feel a little bit more weight in the outer aspect of your heel than you might normally. Spread your toes, lower them down, and then see if you can maintain the arches lifted as your knees drift further away from one another and then back in a little bit. So further away and back in. I'm sitting on the block to reduce that angle of the hip and I've got the block behind me to help me, another block behind me to help me stay upright here. What is really interesting is to look and see if one foot, one arch stays higher than the other. 
So you can start to notice if, if your feet are, and legs are working in slightly different ways one to the next. Okay, enough of that. Cross at your shins, please. Blocks can be out in front of you. If you'd like a little less weight on your hands, you're gonna put the blocks in the medium height position and come into table pose with your toes curled under. Start to rock a little back and forth. See if you can get your pinky toes on the ground here and your big toe with the toes spread out. I realize that this next move may not work for everybody's knees and that's perfectly okay. The idea is that you're just gonna rock back as far as you can and get as much motion in the feet and in the knees as possible. If it's reasonable for you, you're actually gonna sit back and forward. Kind of sit back onto your heels and forward. If not, keep the rocking up. Go a little right, go a little left. And then we're gonna take this to uh, literally the next level. Bring your blocks in, place the blocks in the slightly taller position. So it looks like I'm, I went from kneeling to hands on the blocks. Toes are still spread behind me. And then I'm gonna roll over backwards into a little squat, a supported one, and then right back down to the ground. Arms are basically like, like a straight arm plank position. Rock back, find that chair position of the legs. Look at your toes. I'm gonna wiggle with my hands, some of my, my pinky toes a little further away from the rest and see if I can get them to stay more spread out. And then just three more, three, two, and one. All right. Back to table, wait on the floor or on your blocks, lift one knee off the floor. And this one, you're gonna use the stickiness of your yoga mat to really support it and then open your knee a little bit out to the side. Yep, float your knee a little out to the side, feeling just a little bit of fire happening at the outer aspect of your hip and I'm literally using the sticky mat to spread my toes further apart. Let's go to the other side. So lift the knee off the floor, use the sticky mat to spread the toes further apart and then a little bit of like a Jane Fonda clamshell type thing happening here. Enjoy that burn perhaps that you might be feeling. Lower your knees and step one foot and then the other up by your hands. Bring your elbows to your knees. A lot of times in yoga, we focus so much on stretching the hamstrings, almost in a way where we can pretty easily overstretch them. So what does it mean to um, want and really require good mobility in the hamstrings but not overdo it? Here's one suggestion. Elbows to your knees or your thighs. You could also do this with your hands here if that feels better for your body. Just lock out your elbows. And you're going to straighten one or both legs. And if you're straightening both at the same time, you're going to rock mostly back, but you can go a little side to side. If you're straightening one, really exaggerate the side to side. Spread your toes, look at your feet. Can you maintain the median arch of your foot as you rock right and left? Good. And then hands to your knees, wiggle your toes in, your heels in, your toes in, your heels in. Bring your big toes to touch one another Appreciate how wide the front of your feet hopefully are at this moment, spreading the toes out as far as you can. And we're gonna do a little bit of imaginary skiing. So knees bend and straighten, 
and then they go a little to the right, and then they go a little to the left. Now you're gonna keep the thighs mostly touching one another. It's okay if they go apart a little bit, but because the toes are touching, it's gonna probably be that the thighs will touch too. Right, left, right, left. Keep the whole forefoot on the floor. That's everything from where your laces would be and forward, shoelaces. And then one more time, just really ski right and left, appreciating and acknowledging any difference one side to the next. Straighten your legs, rise up. Do that in any order that feels good to you. And then arms reach all the way tall. Exhale, fold it all the way down, shake it up. Step it back, find your way to plank. If you still have your um, blocks there like I do, you can appreciate, uh, you can keep them there and you can roll forward and just have them sort of keep you lifted as you lower to your knees and you take some micro bends and then some deeper bends in your arms. Chin drops down, back of the neck long. Go through those little half push-ups, half chaturangas, and then build your way to dipping all the way down through shoulders. Touch the blocks, ideally in the tall position. And just take some breaks with this, right? So lower, lower, and then rock back. Two more just like that. Lower, lower, and rock back. And then look between your legs, make sure your big toes are, are facing forward and rock yourself up to downward facing dog. Super strong reach through the arms allows you to get a little bit more of the heels to the floor. Feel free to have a short down dog in the beginning of our class as well. And then see if you can lift the arches of the feet here it's gonna involve your shins actually spinning a little bit outward as you keep the base of the big toe rooted to the ground. Walk your hands all the way to the very back of your yoga mat. Inhale, knees stay bent this time as you rise all the way to standing. Roll over one foot and then roll over the other. So you're rolling to the tops of the toenails. And then take a little bit of a, a circle with one ankle, go in one direction and then in the other, and then the first direction, and then in the second. And from the back of your mat, just draw one knee towards your chest. You can hold to the front of the shin, the back of the thigh. You could even kind of keep the tiptoe on the ground as needed to work on balance here. Strong standing leg, beautiful. Slowly lower down and shake it out a little bit. We'll take it to the other side. So shift, root, come to the tiptoes, maybe rise. Stand tall, standing leg is straight and engaged, and you wanna make sure your body is not leaning back here to accommodate for this weight. You want the ankle and the standing leg to be supportive of you. Slowly lower down and relax. Roll over the tops of the feet again. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, melt it down, walk it right back out finding your way to downward facing dog. Walk your feet back a little more. Don't worry if your heels come down to the floor, press through the arms, right um, armpit dips a little, left armpit dips a little, and then feel the armpits actually lifting up. 
hips go higher, settle your knees, settle your belly to the floor, and then tops of your feet to the floor now. So with this next move, we're gonna play with the transition from plank all the way down to point your toes backwards. And what I want you to feel here with the tops of the feet on the floor is a straight line, more or less, from your big toes out through the crown of the head. So you don't want your heels to rock outward. It's quite normal for your heels to rock outward if you were at rest, but since we're being active here, you're gonna laser beam out through the big toes. Roll your shoulders onto your back, drop the chin, rise up into that half push-up that, that we were practicing before. Curl your toes under, rise to plank. Roll forward and then kind of spin your toes back as you lower down. And you'll notice that I put my knees down on the ground for that. Rise up, curl the toes, find your way to plank. And then as your upper body goes forward, your toes kind of roll back. Not the most elegant transition, but that does the job. Inhale, lift your chest, float your legs. Squeeze the shoulder blades towards one another, taking a W shape with your arms. Exhale, lower down, connect ribs to front pelvis, toes curl under, rise up and back, downward facing dog. And then go ahead and grab your blocks. If you're using them, place the middle height blocks under your hands, both hands a little off to the left side of the yoga mat. Rise your right leg to the sky, draw a bend into your right knee and set your right foot to the outside of the blocks. Rise onto your tiptoes in the back. Find your way to a lunge position, hugging the thighs together. Draw the shoulder blades back a little bit here and then lift your chest like you're just sort of tilting your chest up towards the sky. Hug the thighs in. Find your W shape with your arms. Bend into your front knee. Activate through the calf of your back leg. And then lower down left hand to the inside of your right leg, right arm up towards the sky, all hands down, step it back. You can adjust your blocks if you'd like to shoulder distance and keep your hands on your blocks if you'd like for this version of the vinyasa. Roll to your tiptoes, lower down. As you transition forward, toes point back. Hug the inner heels, scoop the belly. Find your way back to downward facing dog appreciating the big arches of your feet. Lower to your knees for just a moment. A lot of the practices that I teach these days are no longer centered in the vinyasa or the sun salutation. But because we sometimes do that, I want to break down one practice for you. From plank, to upward facing dog. From the position of your toes being tucked under, toenails to the sky versus toenails to the floor for up dog, you have a few options. You can go all at once, which takes a little bit of practice to coordinate and get graceful, or you can flip one leg and then the other. What I would encourage you to do if you're in the 99 percentile, which is flipping one foot and then the other, I would encourage you to alternate which foot you do first. So if it's the right, great. If it's the left, great. But just alternate whichever one that is um, and make sure that you're not repetitively doing your dominant leg first. Find your way to plank to practice. Roll to your tiptoes. And then as you lower down, transition one and then the other. Good. Down dog or child's pose if you prefer. Couple of breaths. Find your way back to downward facing dog if you were in child's pose. And then we're gonna get to the outer hips a little bit as we walk forward. This, by the way, is easier with your hands on the blocks. Crisscross one leg to the other side of the mat. Crossing in front, we're gonna wiggle ourselves to the front of the mat like we're tango dancing. This also, you can feel challenges your ankles a bit. Feet hip distance front of the mat. Rise up halfway, scoop belly back of the neck long. 
rise into or shift rather your weight forward into your tiptoes so you can feel your heels lift up off the floor and then rock back onto your heels maybe feel your toes lift up off the floor <laughs> rise onto your tiptoes and then rock back onto your heels Oof. have fun with it like allow yourself to fall assuming that is safe for you And then bend your knees, rise all the way up. Press your palms together over your heart. Fold in half. Halfway up. Exhale, grab your blocks. Go ahead and step, step your right foot back, right? So your left leg is still there in front. We're gonna squeeze the legs together. Look at your left toes, make sure that those toes are fanning out. Hug your thighs in, rise up into a crescent lunge, arms out into a W shape, squeeze shoulder blades, lift the chest. The biggest effort I'm putting into this is hugging my thighs together. And the second biggest effort is pushing the floor away with my back foot. So we're emphasizing lower body today. From here, that right arm's gonna go to the inside of the left leg. Left arm to the sky, feel the calf stretch on the right leg, and then all hands down. Option to readjust your blocks, still use the blocks, or to put your hands on the floor. Notice if you are staying in Chaturanga, to up dog, which toe rocks back first. And if you're not staying in that position, if you're lowering your knees down as I tend to do, then just hug the inner ankles together. We've got child's pose or down dog for three breaths. Rise it up, vertebra by vertebra. Coming to a neutral um, kneeling position if your knees tolerate this. If your knees are not quite tolerating that position, this is where your blanket comes in, to, in handy. So really slide it between, and you can also have some blocks there to support you. I want us to be able to curl the toes under and sit on them to some extent. So whatever that looks like for you, whatever modifications you need to make, welcome those. We're going to optionally you can always do this with like a chair in front of you uh, for some support, but optionally sort of rock back, lift your knees up off the floor. Or even to tolerance, rock back all the way to a deep squat and then all the way forward and see if this is something that is available to you today. You'll notice that in the fullest squat, there's a little bit of rounding of your spine. And then last one, and maybe all of this looked like just lifting one knee off the floor and then the other as you held onto the chair, all that was good. We'll shift it right back to downward facing dog. Feet walk out, big toes spread apart from the rest, facing directly forward, shift into plank, and then bend one knee and then the other down to the floor. So a little bit of core stabilizing action happening here. Strong, energized arms. And then lower down to the knees and rise up to kneeling. Great place to cushion your knees if you need it. I don't happen to need it, but do cushion your knees as needed. One last thing, if this really feels tight on the front of your hips, it's a little bit awkward, but you could put your knees, prop them up on something, and then you might feel a little bit less tight. 
Okay, so this is an option for those of you who need it. Shift your weight onto the left. Slow motion. Take your right foot out in front, half kneeling. From here, if you feel comfortable, go ahead and wiggle your right foot all the way so that it's in line um, as if you were standing on a balance beam. It's actually very handy to use the edge of your yoga mat to line up your front foot, your back knee, and your back foot, and to really test your core um, and hip strength and coordination, really, as you do this. So front hip points, usually for most of us, is going to be up, ears back, ribs down, uh, for added balance, arms out to the sides. I, mine looks funny because there's a wall next to me. And if you're good to go here, rise onto your front tippy toe and just hold it for a couple of seconds. Lower the heel down, bring your hands to your front knee. Wiggle this foot actually, if it's your right foot in front, closer to the left side of your yoga mat. And then back toes can, or back knee can pivot. So now you're on a big diagonal. Hand helps you to stay posted and still come into this funky version of lunge. My right foot is towards the left side of my mat. My left foot's towards the right side of my mat. There's a bit of a stretch here on the outer hip. Lift the toes, spread them wide, lower them down. Lean forward, sweep the arms back, and then bend your back knee. Curl your um, soft fists towards your heart. Straighten the back knee, lean forward, bend, curl, snuggle everything in, straighten, reach. Last one, bend, curl, settle down, lower your knee back to the earth, wiggle your front foot as far as you can over to the right side of the mat so it feels more like a regular knee down lunge, and then dynamic hamstrings here. So you're gonna bend and straighten. Both hands stay on the front knee. Last one. And then rise up, tiptoes, kneeling. I'm gonna teach an alternate vinyasa. Feel free to do whatever is your favorite vinyasa. Knees, chin and chest, hips stay high. Just different arm strength here. Rooting to your belly, squeeze shoulder blades, float legs. Root your hands, straight line from the knees back to a, um, a knee down plank and then a regular plank. Bend one knee, then the other inside of plank. Downward facing dog. Bring the weight more towards the pinky toes in down dog without losing the base of the big toe on the ground. Straight energized arms, hips shift side to side, arches stay profoundly lifted. And then lower, kneeling, you've got the option of the block, you've got the option of the blanket. Shift your weight to the right side. Slowly settle that left foot in front of you. Half kneeling. Adjust so that front hip points are up, ribs over pelvis, roof of the mouth, over the diaphragm, over the pelvic floor. We're in this like straight line here with the back knee. And then find that straight line with the front foot, the back knee, the back toes curled under. Arms out to the side for added balance support. If you're feeling pretty good here, you could add a little more challenge. Rise to your tiptoes in front. Allow your breath to guide you with this action. Allowing our, our heart rate to slow down for a moment. And then settle the foot, 
Keep wiggling your front foot over, left foot over towards the right side of the mat. Pivot on your right knee, your back knee, so that that back foot is um, on the opposite side of the mat, both hands to your front knee. Find your way to a lunge. Once you're upright, squeeze the inner thighs towards one another, lean forward past your front pinky toe, arms back, and then bend your back knee, curl to the heart. Lean forward, arms back, bend your, your back knee, curl to the heart. You might be wondering what this has to do with the feet and the ankles, and I would suggest that there is a very profound and important relationship between outer hip strength and inner arch strength in the lower extremities, which I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. I think we did more than enough of these. <laughs> Lower your back knee down to the floor and then wiggle your front foot back, unravel. Find your way uh, slowly, if you can, back to kneeling. Take the vinyasa of your choice or skip straight to downward facing dog. Arches engaged. And then from down dog, let's go ahead and walk the hands back a little bit towards the feet. Rise up. And then if you can face your screen and see yourself, you can go ahead and do this or face a mirror. Have your feet be hip distance or shoulder distance apart. Notice what happens when the arches collapse in. What happens on the outside of your hips? You might think not a whole lot happens, but what's really happening here is the knees are pulling in, your thigh bones are now in more of a, a, a sharper Q angle, which is a natural angle between the shins and the thigh bones. The thigh bones almost always, especially on women, form a little bit of a V, but the V gets more exaggerated as the arches drop, right? So it's pulling and stretching the outer hips. As the arches lift, keeping the base of the big toes down, and the toes spread, you can actually feel muscles in the outer hips, so specifically gluteus medius, gluteus minimus activating. And so those muscles are really, really important for foot health. To that uh, point, we'll be playing a little bit with those outer hip muscles. Separate your feet wider apart, so not like a wide, wide stance, but like two thirds of the way to triangle or so. And I want you to place your hand on your outer right hip. You're gonna shift down and back. So it's like you're in a chair pose on that right leg, like a lazy skandasana with the rest of the body. And then lift and spread all of your toes. Exaggerate the arches. Rise up and take it to the other side. Lift and spread, exaggerate the arches. Rise up and down, lift and spread, exaggerate the arches. Up and down, lift and spread, exaggerate the arches. If you are feeling a lot of tightness in your inner thighs just from this, like it would certainly be normal if we were really far away from one foot to the, uh, to the next. But if you're feeling a lot of tightness in your inner thighs just from this more moderately placed stance, then what I would suggest is that you might have some inner thigh tightness that is uh, not supporting the arches of your feet. See if you can do this without your hands, maybe hands crossed over your heart. Hopefully all those sentences I just said made sense. Uh, let me offer one final explanation for that. If, if the inner thighs are tight, you, they may be sort of pulling your knees inward. And if you allow your knees to move in towards one another, again, you're gonna feel a drop in your arch height. That's what I meant by the inner thigh tightness. So that's worth working on. Um, same thing, but different. Toes touch this time. Drop it into chair. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms back. 
Hips go back evenly. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hips back, little bit of chair pose. Inhale, arms up. This time as you exhale and the hips back, shift your weight onto your right leg. Rise onto your left tiptoes. Tuck that left tiptoes behind. Kind of bow down like a very deep curtsy. Inhale, rise. Exhale, chair. Inhale, rise. Exhale, other side. So balance, hips, arches of the feet, ankles. If you want to add a little layer of intrigue to this action, arms can do whatever they need. You can actually be on the top of your back foot. So you're not going to get as much support from that leg. It's not intuitive to go onto the top of the foot because obviously we get so much stability from our toes. But play with that idea. Last one. And then rise up and just shake it out a little. Hips right and left, maybe in a circle. Pick a leg, maybe the leg that you know needs a bit more strengthening. Keep that one in front. Hands optionally lightly to the top of the knee. Blanket there as needed. You're going to lower that back leg slowly down to the floor. Notice how much ankle range of motion that required. Notice how much toe stabilization that required. Do it a couple of times if you felt challenged. And again, we're going to come on to hands and knees and just shift a little side to side. Please walk your hands just the tiniest bit in front of your shoulders. Please pivot on your left knee and straighten your right leg as you lift your right arm hand to your hip. Look back at that back leg now. So you can try to get as much of the pinky toe side down to the ground as possible. Pushing the pinky toe side of the foot, rooting it down, lifting your hips, rise your top arm to the sky. And then lower down, check out your arch again, spread your toes again, sink and sink. Other side. So this is a fundamental part of a side plank. It's a fundamental part of side angle, warrior two legs, all of those actions. Outer edge of that back foot really rooting, but don't forget that the base of the big toe is solidly on the ground, arches lifting, and then lower and shift. Once you get to this first side, again, outer foot stays down, as you rise up, slide your hand down this leg, top arm by your ear, grip the toes into the floor, reach and lower, windmill your arms, knee down, knee pivots, other leg back, outer edge of that back foot roots, rise up, Still rooting, lean lightly down that leg, top arm by your ear, inhale and rise and lower. From table, big toes point forward, exaggerate the space between your toes and open one knee and open the other. Fanning out the toes. Notice if this feels different than it felt in the beginning of our practice today. And go ahead and tuck all 10 toes under. Option to sit on your heels. Option to have the block between your feet. Notice how that feels. 
and we're going to play one more um, uh, challenging position in this way. And again, I'm going to show you with the, with the chair. So this is obviously a folded chair, but you can use whatever you've got at your home. So rocking back, you can rock all the way back until you're in a deep squat with your heels on or off the floor. There's on the floor, there's off the floor. By the way, feel free to have your knees go wide from one another. You can also um, kind of work here to here, here to what it is to have your heels up. That takes a lot of knee control. And you can even lower one knee and then the other down. Lots of things you can do here. Just find a way to get a little bit comfortable somehow, some way for you. Shifting side to side. Let your body move a bit intuitively. As much support as you need. An ottoman underneath your, your hips here is a great thing. And then however you're gonna get there, let me move my chair out of the way. We're gonna go from whatever squat variation you were working on, potentially without using our hands, although not required, to Baddha Konasana, circle sit. So here in circle sit, Use a block as needed. We're gonna use our fist, right fist to the arch of the right foot. Go ahead and press it out. Two to three passes. If circle sit doesn't really work for you, adjust as needed. So I'm gonna use this block under my right shin, kind of supporting it, and then right knuckles just behind that inner ankle bone. Drive it up and up and up and up, all the way up the inner calf and all the way down. A couple of passes here as well. Lean into it. If the elbow's straight, you're really using the strength of your hips here, which is nice. And you can go up into your inner thigh. Using the heel of your hand. And then we'll take it to the other side. So. Left hand makes a fist. Massage out the arches of your feet or that foot. Two to three passes. Start to use the knuckles, perhaps after that third pass, just behind the inner ankle bone, moving up the inseam side of the leg. The idea is as if you could pull the muscle backwards a little bit away from the shin bone towards the middle of the calf. You can use both arms if you'd like. And then certainly feel free to also go into your inner thigh on this side. We're not forcing the leg into an uncomfortable stretch. We're just massaging out the muscles, heels of the hands for this part of the body so it's not quite so harsh. One last thing. 
bring the big toes to touch in front of you with the knees bent. Lift and spread your toes. Appreciate your feet. Notice if they look a little wider at the toe side. Keep the base of the toes down. Exaggerate the arch and just open your knees a little out to the side. Scrunch the base of the toes as close as you can get them. This is going to feel a little strange to your heels. Keeping the arches twisted. And then release. Just noticing how that felt compared to our very first movement in the practice today. Come on down and arrange your space for Shavasana. If you're gonna line your back, I recommend a rolled up blanket for under your thighs. And if you're gonna sit in a seated meditation, of course you can do that as well. You can sit on your blanket or you can use your blanket to cushion your knees, which I'll show you in just a moment. If you're on your back, then let your feet really flop out as you lower yourself down vertebra by vertebra. I'm going to sh yeah, show you what it would be like to use the blanket to support your knees. So you can tuck your feet in, curl the blanket underneath your shins. You gotta sit on a little bit of something here. And then wherever you are, Allow your eyelids to close, to get heavy. Feel that natural aligning of the roof of the mouth over the diaphragm, the bottom ribs, over the pelvic floor. If you're upright, you will feel sort of the center of your sitting bones and an evenness right to left. Lips together, teeth apart, tongue floating to the roof of the mouth. If your mind wanders, bring it back to your breath. Back to sensation. The goal of all of this, of course, is to 
be able to transition off the mat while maintaining a bit of this stillness, a bit of this spaciousness between one thought and the next, between a thought that arises and a reaction to that thought. Let's practice one more full immersion in breath, riding the wave of the inhale and the exhale. Starting to wiggle fingers, toes, stretch long, stretching into a more spacious way of being and thinking. Gently draw your knees to your chest if you're on your back. Rolling to one side and making your way to a comfortable seated position. We'll bring our palms together over the heart, representing that commitment, the union that is yoga, bringing together all of the disparate parts of ourselves, pulling in our community and reminding ourselves of the interconnectedness of every single thing on this planet. And it is to that commitment to unity that we bow and thanks for this practice, and thanks for you being here. <laughs>